Interested in profiting from the ongoing digital transformation? Want a market beating yield and a double digit dividend growth rate? Would you like to scoop up a high quality dividend growth stock while it's on sale? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best selling author. 30 year old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before we get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is a leading technology corporation. What part of our world isn't being transformed by technology? That's a rhetorical question because there is no part of life that isn't being touched by this. The companies that are leading the charge on the digital transformation are making a ton of money by doing so. One such company is this company and its shareholders are reaping massive rewards, including a juicy growing dividend. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I wanna share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Qualcomm Inc which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Qualcomm Inc, stock ticker QCOM, is a multinational technology corporation that creates semiconductors, software, and services related to wireless technology and connectivity. Founded in 1985, Qualcomm is now a $130 billion by market cap tech monster that employs 51,000 people. The company reports results across two business segments, Qualcomm CDMA Technologies, or QCT, 85% of fiscal year 2022 revenue, and Qualcomm Technology Licensing, or QTL, 14%. The world is becoming increasingly reliant on technology right across the board. In particular, wireless technologies based around connectivity are becoming critical to everyday life. A digital transformation is playing out and it's accelerating. This was true before the pandemic hit, but it's even more true today as we now have a greater number of people working remotely. This digital transformation started with the PC, then the internet. It then hit another gear with the invention of the smartphone. Well, Qualcomm has long been a leader in the wireless space and the company holds virtually all essential patents used in 3G, 4G, and 5G networks. Because of this, Qualcomm collects royalty income on the majority of 3G, 4G, and 5G handsets sold worldwide. But wait, there's more. We're now entering the age of the internet of things where everything from your watch to your car are digitally interconnected. This directly benefits Qualcomm. The company had the foresight to parlay their early IP success into a diversified business model that offers a suite of technologies and services across an entire IoT ecosystem. The company is now exposed to some of the biggest trends in all of technology, e.g. 5G, broadband, modern RF systems, gaming, IoT, self-driving autos, AI, and AR VR. Simply put, Qualcomm is positioned to reap massive rewards from the accelerating digital transformation. What that should mean is growth across the company's revenue, profit, and dividend for years to come. Already, Qualcomm has increased its dividend for 21 consecutive years, well on its way to becoming a dividend aristocrat. The 10-year dividend growth rate of 11.7% is solid, although more recent dividend raises have been in the high single-digit area. Still, you're able to pair that with the stock's market-beating yield of 2.8%, which is basically right in line with its own five-year 
average. And this appears to be a very safe dividend to me as evidenced by the low payout ratio of 30.9%. I like dividend growth stocks in what I call the sweet spot, a yield of between 2.5% and 3.5% paired with a high single digit or higher dividend growth rate. We can see that Qualcomm is clearly right in that sweet spot where you're able to strike a nice balance between yield and growth. Looking at business growth, Qualcomm advanced its revenue from $24.9 billion in fiscal year 2013 to $44.2 billion in fiscal year 2022. That's a compound annual growth rate of 6.6%. Really good. I usually look for a mid-single digit top line growth rate from a mature business like this. Qualcomm more than delivered here. Meanwhile, earnings per share grew from $3.91 to $11.37 over this period. That's a compound annual growth rate of 12.6%. Excellent bottom line growth here, and we can see a close relationship between EPS growth and dividend growth over the last decade, showing thoughtfulness and skill on the part of management. Prolific buybacks account for a lot of the excess bottom line growth. For perspective, the outstanding share count is down by about 35% over the last 10 years, and that's substantial. Looking forward, CFRA believes that Qualcomm will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 1% over the next three years. This seems awfully pessimistic to me. Keep in mind, the last time I looked at CFRA's three-year projection for Qualcomm's earnings per share compound annual growth rate was almost exactly one year ago. At that time, the number was 19%. So going from 19% to 1% in one year seems a bit much to me, almost as if you're just violently swinging from one extreme to another. Still, I do think CFRA sums up the overall situation pretty well with this passage, and I quote, a sharp decline in smartphone demand, specifically in China and within the Android ecosystem, as well as easing of industry supply constraints led to elevated channel inventory that will likely take until the middle of calendar year 2023 to normalize. We think this will also have a negative implication to pricing while the pending loss of Apple's modem business, likely fiscal year 2025, will keep sentiment depressed in our view. That said, we like increasing momentum outside of handsets with autos growing 58% and pipeline now exceeding $30 billion." Unquote. Qualcomm is still in the middle of correcting its prior over-reliance on handsets. This involves an ongoing shift toward IoT, especially via autos. The average modern car now requires well over 1,000 semiconductor chips. And that explains the massive backlog which CFRA touched on. CFRA adds this on Qualcomm's diversification strategy, and again, and I quote, despite challenging handset revenue down 18%, we are also impressed with Qualcomm's diversification strategy with a shift away from Apple given the expected business loss in fiscal year 2025. Unquote. That said, the handset space is still quite lucrative. It's been made to be even more lucrative over the last few years via the adoption of 5G. CFRA states this again, and I quote, Qualcomm has also benefited from 5G adoption and content gained from the ongoing shift to higher end devices, given its offerings span baseband, transceiver, RF front end, and antennas, unquote. Distilling it down, the 19% forecast from last year seemed to be too aggressive. Likewise, I think this year's 1% forecast is too cautious. I'm somewhere in the middle. Now, Qualcomm is navigating tough comps this year as fiscal year 2021 and part of fiscal year 2022 featured above average growth that was unsustainable. And so this year in particular could be tough from a year over year growth standpoint. But Qualcomm's future looking out toward fiscal year 2024 and beyond is about as exciting as I can remember. If we assume pretty modest mid single digit EPS growth over the next year or two, that still sets up Qualcomm for continued high single digit dividend growth. The payout ratio gives them that kind of room for it. Even flat EPS growth could allow for this. From there, the doors open for a nice acceleration in both earnings per share growth and dividend growth over the following years. And you're starting that whole thing off with a 2.8% yield. I think that's a pretty nice setup. Moving over to the balance sheet, Qualcomm has a rock solid financial position. The long-term debt to equity ratio is 0.8, while the interest coverage ratio is almost 27. Profitability is extremely healthy. Over the last five years, the firm is average annual net margin of 15.7% and annual return on equity of 77.8%. Overall, I view Qualcomm as a fantastic tech business that is on the forefront of digital transformations, which is something that should handsomely reward shareholders over time. And with IP, R&D, economy, 
economies of scale, pricing power, and switching costs, the business does benefit from durable competitive advantages. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Litigation has been a notable issue for Qualcomm for several years. Qualcomm has a near monopoly on CDMA technology patents, and these valuable patents and the lucrative royalty fees they generate have led to contentious legal battles worldwide. The very business model is a risk unto itself as the ever faster pace of change across technology means that Qualcomm will have to constantly evolve in order to keep pace and remain competitive. Handset makers have been vertically integrating, which threatens Qualcomm's handset chip business. A number of Qualcomm's end markets are still relatively new, introducing questions and uncertainty about the long-term prospects of these markets. Being an international business, Qualcomm faces geopolitical risks and currency exchange rates. These risks strike me as quite acceptable when viewed against the quality and growth of the business and with the stock down about 30% from its recent high, the valuation has become about as attractive as I've ever seen it. The price earnings ratio is 10.9. This is obviously well below the broader market earnings multiple. It's also sitting at less than half of its own five-year average of 24.2, a stunning discount here. The price to cash flow ratio of 12.6 is also well off of its own five-year average of 19.3. And the yield, as noted earlier, is in line with its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 7.5%. This dividend growth rate isn't as high as I can go, but it is near the top. I scaled things back just slightly for Qualcomm as the near-term picture around demand for some of its products is just cloudy. The next year or two could be subdued in terms of the size of dividend raises. However, once Qualcomm moves past this air pocket, the acceleration across the business could be rapid. Keep in mind, the most recent dividend raise announced less than two months ago came in at almost 7%, despite this being a very challenging year for comps. If that's pretty close to the worst, I'm optimistic about the best. With the payout ratio being as low as it is, and with Qualcomm's dividend growth resume being as strong as it is, I would be highly surprised if the company fails to average out with a high single-digit dividend growth rate over the next decade or so. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $137.60. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates QCOM as a four star stock with a fair value estimate of $140. CFRE rates QCOM as a three star hold with a 12-month target price of $140. Very tight consensus here. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $139.20, which would in indicate the stock is possibly 19% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Qualcomm Inc. is a terrific business that is leading the charge on the digital transformation, all while diversifying its business into exciting new growth areas of technology. It has a great balance sheet and high returns on capital. With a market-beating yield, a double-digit long-term dividend and growth rate, a low payout ratio, more than 20 consecutive years of dividend increases, and the potential that shares are 19% undervalued, long-term dividend growth investors lacking tech exposure should take a very close look at this name right now. And now for a special news announcement. Novo Nordisk AS stock ticker NVO just reported a phenomenal Q1 report showing 27% year-over-year revenue growth and 41% year-over-year earnings per share growth. This company is practically printing money right now due to the popularity of new weight loss drugs such as Wigovi. This stock isn't super cheap, nor is the 1.1% yield super high, but if you're looking for a long-term winner that is growing its revenue, profit, and dividend like crazy, Novo Nordisk should be on your radar. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links including linked to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm often invested in the same high-quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. 
Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who've been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time. Thank you.